How's everybody doing today? Come on, you can do better than that. How's everybody doing? Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> oh yeah, I see the towers laughing here. طب ازيكم؟ ازيكم يا اخواننا؟ ازيكم يا مصاروف فرحانين كده اهو؟ اهلا وسهلا. Okay, I'll hear everyone. We'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance with Miss Reem Ibrahim. Everybody please rise. As I look around, I see many familiar faces. I also see new faces, and I see the FBI in the back. <laughs> I think my phone will be tapped after this event. We have about 500 people registered for this event. We have senators, congressmen, attorney generals, U.S. attorney, county executive, county sheriffs, county prosecutors, freeholders, homeland security, mayor and council, deputy mayor, community leaders, clergy, law enforcement, and of course we have the community. I feel so safe. I'm truly humbled and honored to share this platform with the most respected politicians, friends, teachers, and mentors. Thank you, AMU, for giving me this opportunity. I'm glad you're here and I'm pleased to host you and all of our diverse community in Teaneck, New Jersey for our 18th annual community brunch. This is going to be a great day. Thank you for your attendance. Over the next couple of hours, we continue with our commitment in delivering the best, most focused event developed specifically to meet our collective needs. Sit down, relax, and enjoy the event. We're going to have a blast. Not that kind of blast. For those who are attending for the first time, I'd like to give you a brief history about the AMU. Our president and founder, Mr. Yunus, had a dream. The dream is to empower and strengthen American Muslim while embracing our values and culture and assimilate into American society. Also, I'd like to talk a little bit about the AMU event. With this event, a large group of people across our AMU organization have worked very hard to ensure you have the best event possible. Our directors, our board, subject matter expertise, and of course our lawyers and our volunteers to create this event. This event takes about four months to come to fruition. So imagine the amount of work these wonderful people put in. Before we begin, I'd like to start with some rules. Number one, I'll start with a disclaimer. The videos, views, and opinion expressed during this event do not necessarily reflect those of the AMU. Two, everyone has a survey form on the table. Please make sure to fill it out before you leave. It will take you literally 20 seconds. Let us know how we can do better. And lastly, for educational purposes only, the name of the organization is American Muslim Union, not Muslim, it's Muslim. When you say Muslim, it has a completely different meaning. At this time, allow me to introduce our president and founder, Mr. Yunus. Mr. Yunus, please come to the stage. <laughs> I really uh, want to wish and, uh, everybody here in this room the best. This has been a great event. We've been doing it for quite a bit. And it's been uh, not easy to do. And I started this year to do something different. I start getting the new generation to take over. And I say, you're going to run it, and I'm just going to watch. You, because now I'm getting a little, little younger, and uh, you want somebody to carry on and to keep, to keep this beautiful organization going. And that's what I decided to do. And uh, first, I would love to introduce this new group to your guys. Come on. So at this point, our president would like to introduce the new members of the AMU. AMU members, please come to the stage. And please hold your applause to the end. Mustafa Ahmed. He's the vice president. Nick Matahin, 
is the, the executive director. <laughs> Sandy Dambra is the treasurer. Where is Sandy? She's coming. This is the... Mohammed Amin, the attorney. Khalid Bangawish, the attorney. What is my outreach director? <laughs> Mohammed Kamil, IT director. <laughs> Mubin Sheikh is the community re uh, relation director. <laughs> my wife, Mervet, she is the head. She is the one doing everything. <laughs> Well, She's the worst of me. Yeah. well, I hope you will have, but see, I'm, I'm going to leave this for the young generation to run it, and I'm going to watch, and I hope you enjoy it, and I'd like to see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yunus. Something to keep in mind as we get underway today is that when we look ahead and dream about how we can change the future, we have to engage our thinking along two dimensions, integration and diversity. In order to do that, we must think outside the box. We have to think about the adjacent possible. And by that, I mean we have to look into the untapped potentials of the community. With this, I'd like to play a little video. It's an inspirational video. Let's go to the video. Dr. Islam Fayyumi with a recitation of the Holy Quran. Dr. Islam Fayyumi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, community leaders, policy makers, law enforcement. I ask that God continue to use us to do his good work in building bridges of love and trust amongst our communities. Today's theme is integration. And two things come to mind when you think about integrating into our civil society. One is that the individual feels like they are part of a greater whole. And two, without compromising their principles or ideals. And two, that they give back to society the best of what they have to make the, this country greater. So I chose two verses from the Holy Quran which speak to that or reflect that kind of uh, idea about integration. The first is in chapter 60, verse 8, and the second is in chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 92. Just a little context because it is important. In chapter 60, God warns the Muslims not to lose their principles not to lose their values, to maintain their beliefs. Someone could take this and go the wrong way with it and seclude themselves from society and run away from others who are different than them in their ideas, in their values, in their beliefs. But God, who knows all things and who created us and knows the wrong tendencies of his creation, warned us not to do that and said integrate yourselves into society not just that be just not just that be good and give back the best of what you have so let me begin the recitation in the traditional uh, way first which is to add a melodious tone to God's words 
and then I will translate them in English. Inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في ولا ولم يخرجوكم لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم Thank you all again for being here. We are all aware of what the Southern Poverty Law Center calls the year of hate. While the political climate in 2015 has made many in our community nervous, there were many positive developments in 2015, legal and social, at a national and local level. At a national level, we saw a major legal victory in 2015, in the case Reza versus the city of New York. It was well documented that the NYPD was conducting warrantless surveillance of American Muslims. However, that has come to an end thanks to this case. For the first time, the NYPD will be compelled to put reforms into place to prevent unjustified discriminatory surveillance of American Muslims. At a national level, we've seen many acts of solidarity from non-Muslims, uh, most notably from President Obama. In Maryland, President Obama's historic visit to a mosque was about his solidarity with American Muslims to combat prejudice. In Massachusetts, Chief of the Supreme Judicial Court, Justice Ralph D. Gantz, attended the Islamic Society of Boston. There, he said to his audience, the, the most relevant portion of his speech, he said, I am here to assure you that you do not stand alone. You have a constitution and laws to protect your rights, to practice your religion, to protect you from discrimination and to protect you from acts of violence that may be committed against you because of your religion or your nation of origin. And without any question, the same principle applies here in New Jersey. In Illinois, a professor at Wheaton College, Ms. Larcia Hawkins, risked her job to wear a hijab as a sign of solidarity with American Muslims. During the wave of anti-Muslim rhetoric in December, Ms. Hawkins, a practicing Christian, said theoretical solidarity is not enough. There were, of course, acts of courage among Muslim Americans, most notably from Rose Hammond, who wore a sign with the word Muslim on a yellow star at a Trump rally in defiance of Mr. Trump's statements at that time. The point of this is that when we saw acts of violence, when we saw acts of hate and exclusion and bigotry, Muslims and non-Muslims responded with acts of love, courage, and solidarity. And maybe that is the way forward. It's satisfying to be reminded that we are equal under the law. And, is, and it is humbling and moving to know that people are working for equality, acceptance, and integration in New Jersey. 
Just to give you one example of a local achievement, uh, we have members of a nonprofit organization, the New Guidance Center, that added EAD to the Paramus School Board calendar. It was not easy for them to do, uh, but with their sacrifice, they invested their time into understanding how things work, into building relationships. And because of this, they were able to get the EAD on the Paramus School calendar, as it should happen because the law allows it. We can, we can do that, and we can make achievements on behalf of our community. This event, in part, is about the public support that government officials are giving us today, and it represents that those in New Jersey who create, interpret, and enforce the law acknowledge the principles of equality and integration. In the end, I suppose you could be one of two people, a pessimist or an optimist. The pessimist believes that we can't do anything because those people over there, they're part of the, they're part of the establishment, but we're not. Luckily, in my humble opinion, that's not how it works. And I hope when you look at this room, you see it as half full. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ben Jawish. For those who just walked in, our theme is American Muslim integration. And just in case Fox News is here, is integration, not interrogation. Uh, <laughs> the sixth president of the United States, Quincy Adams, said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, and do more, and become more, you are a leader. And with that, allow me to invite to the stage New Jersey Acting Attorney General, Mr. John Huffman. Thanks, Nick. Um, it is a tremendous pleasure uh, to be here and to have an opportunity, frankly, to say goodbye uh, to a group of people that I have come to see, certainly not just as colleagues um, or as partners, but as a soulful and dear friends. Uh, at the Attorney General's office, we convene a group of Muslim leaders from throughout the state about once every three months. And we sit down and we have a conversation. Now, we have promised ourselves from the first conversation all the way to the last, which was just the other day, that no matter what happens, we will always talk. We'll always talk about the most difficult issue and we'll always talk about that issue first. The first meeting I was at, we talked about the NYPD spying issue. And the last meeting I was at, we talked about the difficulty facing the Muslim community in light of statements that were made during the Republican uh, primary campaign. Not easy issues. Certainly not easy for me coming from this administration, but absolutely, positively necessary issues. And in so doing, we have created such an interrelated web of trust, and of friendship. And we have accomplished so much. The state police is now trained on cultural sensitivity for the Muslim community. We have had numerous law enforcement expos to bring Muslim youths into law enforcement. We have trained the state medical examiner's office on how to be respectful to Muslims during the autopsy process and what that means, what's important for that community. We have brought the Muslim youth into our discussions. And I'll tell you, that was one of the single most inspiring things that I have been part of with regard to this conversation. Because I thought the conversations were difficult with the Muslim adults, and wow, they were tough with the Muslim youth. And they were great. What an unbelievably inspiring and educated group. And what a, what a fantastic thing it was to bring them into all of our conversations. Muhammad Yunus before got up and he introduced the next generation of the American Muslim Union and replaced sort of some of the gray beards with American some of the black Muslim hair. Union. And, pardon? American Muslim Union? American Muslim Union, I'm sorry. Over it. <laughs> American Muslim Union, I'm American Muslim Union, I'm sorry. And replacing some of the gray beards with some of the black hair. And, and that's one of the most important things because, you know, what happens while we're here? Uh, is not really very important compared to what foundation we lay for what happens in the future. And it was so inspiring to have the youth involved. You know, we also set up a system for every time a difficult issue comes up, we would have immediate phone calls on how to deal with that. We did it with San Bernardino, we did it with Paris, and we were able to help uh, get the community's word out 
um, after the Paris attacks so that they could stand up and defend the community and, and, and talk about how repugnant and repulsive those attacks were. And ultimately, it was uh, Muhammad Yunus who brought to our attention that there was a law enforcement speech that was being given to law enforcement down in Ocean County that was uh, anti-Islamic and homophobic. And we were able to talk to law enforcement and say, this has absolutely no place in this state, and to make sure that something like that would never happen again. And And in those conversations, I certainly have demanded a lot of the Muslim community, a lot. But I have also demanded the same from other communities. I sat down at a meeting of Jewish leaders a couple of weeks ago, and they gave a presentation. And after the presentation, they asked me to give a response. And my response was, what are you doing to take leadership and bring ties closer to the Muslim community? That was what was important to me. And I got a response back a week later that said, we, as the Jewish community, are going to stand up and push Dr. Chaudhry's pledge. Because that's what we need to do. I think that's an incredible example of how far we have come in the state and how progressive we are in the state of those relationships and, and how incredibly important that they are. So I leave next week. And luckily, I don't think that matters much. Because we have set such a strong framework and foundation for communication and cooperation and collaboration that my being gone doesn't matter. I did want to take a second. I wanted to introduce you to the state's next attorney general who has the exact same sense of principle, collaboration, cooperation, and I'll tell you, he's a heck of a lot smarter than I am. So give a second and please let me introduce Robert Logie. Hi, good morning. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to the Attorney General Hoffman for developing such a strong relationship. And it's a relationship that the entire department uh, incredibly values. And I want to take this opportunity to double that commitment to express to everyone that we intend to uh, continue all the great relationships all the great communications that the Attorney General and the communities have established, and thank you for welcoming me here. I just want to tell you guys, he's been a great friend, not only uh, official, but him and the Bullfishmen really been, both of them been great friends to the community. And uh, I cannot say enough. He really, I don't know what even to say, but he's just been great friend. Thank you very much. Eleanor Roosevelt said, and I hope Donald Trump is listening to this, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. In your face, Donald Trump. Allow me to call to the stage Congressman Bill Pascrell. Bill Pascrell, everyone. A little bit about Bill Pascrell being from Paramus, Bill Pascal was a high school teacher for 12 years in Paramus, and I see many folks in Paramus here. I see the superintendent, I see some council people, and I'm hoping the mayor will show up in a little bit. Everybody, Bill Pascrell. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Many of us have uh, come every year. We feel enlightened when we leave. And I'm so gratified to see so many. I remember when we first started, there weren't this many people here. Because people were, let me use this word, Bob. <laughs> people were a little reluctant to come to this event and did not understand how close and associated we are whether we like it or not. So this is the great country that I grew up in. And I grew up in a great neighborhood in Patterson, South Patterson. I know it like the back of my hand. There were no Italian restaurants in South Patterson. 
And of course, I'm 100% Italian. There were many Mideastern restaurants. And while a very different situation today where every storefront has Arabic, it was very different then. Yet, I ate more Arabic food, particularly Syrian and Lebanese, than Italian food. This is a great country. Anybody who says we're going to make America great again doesn't know what in God's name they're talking about. So when I grew up, everybody lived from all over the world. I had that advantage. And I had the advantage of my mom and dad teaching me be a bridge builder because any donkey can knock down a barn. And so I'm happy and honored to be here today. The first time I visited the Golan Heights, it looked down into Syria and the road to Damascus. Something happened that afternoon, and I was mesmerized. It wasn't simply because I had had a glass of Golan wine an hour before, but I was mesmerized. It echoed through the valley. The next time I went to the Golan Heights, last summer, during war, I looked down from the very same place I had been in the first time I went to the Golan Heights years ago. And all as you could, you see powder smoke, a burst of powder smoke, silence, and then boom, the Syrian civil war. What a difference, what a difference. Our brothers and sisters in Syria reach out, they need us. Those millions of people who've been dislocated. It's easy to talk here. Very easy to talk of charity. It's another thing to make the step, do something to help these little kids who have nothing the clothes on their back. We have a responsibility for anyone, anyone. I don't care what their political persuasion is. To say we cannot in any manner, shape, or form, take these young children back into perhaps the United States of America, like many other countries have stepped up to the plate, is horrible. It's horrible. So we have responsibilities. These trying times we go through now are changing how we look at each other, are changing how law enforcement looks at the rest of the community. And I'm so proud of law enforcement for rising up against the cultural barriers. Not an easy job to begin with, much more difficult job in complex times. So my friends, I took the call on 9-11 evening from the former chief of police in Patterson, New Jersey, uh, Mr. Sp chief Spagnola. And Chief Spagnola knew exactly what I was asking because I had, I was in Washington. And we didn't have cell phones. So circuitously, he got the call to me to say, relax, everything's under control. Our residents are with us. And tomorrow morning in Patterson, there will be more American flags in the South Patterson section than any place else in this country.
I mean, that's what happened. So, so, for anybody to use that event, that horrific, catastrophic event, to try to resonate hatred in this country is probably the lowest place in Dante's Inferno will be set aside, set aside for those who not only try to divide us, but want us to kill each other. The lowest place in Dante's Inferno are for those people. So feel refreshed. We have a good law enforcement group in the United States, but we have an excellent one in the state of New Jersey, from the U.S. Attorney's Office to our Attorney General to our Chief of Police, our Sheriff's Departments, uh, to uh, our great state troopers, what a great organization. Did they make mistakes? Only God is perfect, I'm sorry. We all make mistakes. You wanna see mistakes? Come to the Congress. <laughs> day in and day out, you wanna see mistakes. I'm proud of what you all stand for. This is important. This is a very important event. And I know you take, when you leave, and share with our brothers and sisters who are not here today. As a member of the Congress, and I'm proud of that, even though we joke and we stumble, and I'm sure I speak for our great Senator Bob Menendez, this is a country for everybody. It is not a country of slackers. We need everybody and every religion is important to the dynamic of this greatest of all nations god bless you god bless the american muslim god bless